is his name. As we end or we enter the Advent season, we think about how worthy our God is today. We think about his great sacrifice for our sin. And he is worthy this morning. What a great time to worship with you today as we travel this morning to the book of Matthew chapter 1. The book of Matthew chapter 1. Even though we're entering into the season of Advent, I felt impressed by the Lord to continue our biblical roles of God. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about Jesus coming into the world. Worthy. Worthy is he today. You know, none of us are worthy today. But he counted us worthy. Now I want you to think about what I said. I don't want to bury us in unworthiness. But listen to me, guys, as you're traveling to Matthew chapter 1. We're unworthy today. But he counted us worthy. Now think about what I'm saying. He counted us worthy to come, right? He didn't have to come. Somebody said Jesus had to die. No, he didn't. He chose to die. And you need to get that right. Because he chose you and me, and that's the reason he came, and that's what makes it so special today. So in our biblical roles of God, uh, I, I want to talk about today why the virgin birth. Why the virgin birth. And it's so good to see all y'all today. I know you had a great Thanksgiving and had a good time. And with family and friends, we've got our Thanksgiving this afternoon with our family. And I'm kind of excited. We got, got duck gumbo cooked by my wonderful wife. And we've got uh, crappie coming on. We're not really, really traditionalists. But anyway, uh, we're having a great time. And I know y'all are too as well. But in the midst of all that, worthy is his name. The virgin birth. And we all sit here and think about that this morning and the impossibility of that, right? That's humanly impossible, right? Can I get an amen? Can't happen. So, the first thing I want to do is base this message upon something. I want to base this message upon the fact that your pastor believes the Bible is the inspired, inerrant Word of God. I have nothing else to base the virgin birth on, folks, except that God's Word, I believe, is true. Now, you're going to have trouble with this message today if you don't believe God's Word is truth. But if you believe God's word is truth, I'm going to share three reasons I believe the virgin birth is a great blessing to us. The word of God says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. Every one of us in this building and listening by the internet have been born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, holy, saved, a woman of great character. That's the reason she was still a virgin. She became pregnant through the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's impossible. But in the words of Jesus to Sarah and Abraham... Nothing is impossible with God. That went to a supernatural birth, but not as supernatural as this one. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. Folks, we need to think about that. Everybody's sin. And you don't need to go around telling about everybody's sin. I get sick of that on social media. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and say it. This was a godly man, and now his wife that he's fixing him 
I mean, he's, he's engaged to a woman. Now she's pregnant, but he honored her enough, even in that, not to make a public disgrace about her. Now, that's your side word this morning. Amen. That'll help us all, right? So he, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son, son of David. The angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Again, humanly impossible. With all the technology that we have this day and time to help people to have children, still humanly impossible impossible. You say, why do you believe that, brother? Because I believe what I'm reading to you. I believe this is God's word to us. And so thus, she was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son. No sonogram needed. Don't even think about a name. His name will be Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophet. So, you see, this has already been prophesied by Isaiah. Look, the virgin, and Isaiah would have lived 700 years before this. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Now, I want everybody to say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. He did not have sexual relations with her until the son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Father, today I stand in the honor of who you are. You are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. Sweet Holy Spirit, you are worthy. You are the Trinitarian God. We thank you today that we have an opportunity to share your word. Thank you for our experience of worship. Thank you for our worship team and their dedication. Thank you that they have brought us into your presence. And today, God, I pray that you would anoint your servant, that I might speak the truth, Lord. That's the only desire I have from this pulpit. And I pray that we would realize your great gift. Of salvation in Jesus name amen why the virgin birth because first of all Jesus is God Jesus is God you say well brother how that's simplistic everybody knows that no they don't that's what separates us from all the cults of the world that's what separates us from all the cults of the world the cults in the world say Jesus is the Son of God with power, but not literally God. And so all the religions of the world, it would separate us from all the religions of the world when we say Jesus is God. And you need to say that with faith. You need to say that with confidence. Now I want you to write this down. The virgin birth reveals Jesus' preexistence. It reveals Jesus' preexistence. Why does it reveal his preexistence? John chapter 1. And again, I'm going to look at a lot of scripture today. This is based on scripture. If you don't believe the scripture, you're going to have trouble with the virgin birth. And in our day and time, some people don't believe that. But if you, if you question them, they tell you they don't truly believe the scripture. But I believe the word of God. And what does it say in John 1, 1? It says, in the beginning... The Word already what? Existed. The Word was with God. There you go. And the Word was God. The Word is God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light. To everyone, light and life go hand in hand. I don't have time to deal with that this morning, though. The light shine in the darkness, and the darkness can never. Everybody say never. I don't care how dark this world gets. I don't care if ever a devil of hell comes against us. They cannot bring a darkness that God's light 
cannot break through. And I know we live in a dark and sinful world, but the light of God shines as bright as it's ever shined. And I want you to understand why the virgin birth? Because it reveals to us Jesus already existed because he did not need a human father uh, to be conceived in the womb. Not only that, I want you to write this down. Why the virgin birth? Jesus is eternal. Jesus is eternal. He did not come into existence at conception. He did not come into existence at conception or when he was born in the manger. We know he is eternal, the Bible says, and you can write this scripture down. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 16. We don't have it in your notes but I want you to write it down, Colossians 1, 15 and 16. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is super, supreme over all creation. For through him God created everything in the heavenly realm and on the earth. So he existed before anything was created. In other words, Jesus is not created. He was not created. Formed in the womb in the sense of coming into existence. Or he didn't come into existence at conception like you and I. Everybody in this room came into existence at conception. Because we believe life begins at conception. But the fact is, Jesus is eternal. He has always been. And as we looked at when we dealt with Elohim, he began the beginning because everything was created through him and for him. So he's eternal today. Now, let's talk about that. Because he's eternal, he can offer you what? Eternal life. See, here's the debate. If Jesus is only the Son of God with power, and if somehow he's not the God-man, then how can he offer us eternal life? If he's not eternal, he cannot offer eternal life. But he is the eternal God who has always been and will always be. And so the foundation of our hope lies in the virgin birth that he has always existed and always will exist. And because of his, his eternal nature, he is able to offer you eternal life. So, I want you to write this down. Jesus is the second person of the Holy Trinity. We talked about Elohim a few weeks back. If you missed that message, you can go to the YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube and type in FIMC Decatur. It'll bring up our channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and I don't know. I think you're supposed to do something else, but I always forget what it is. But anyway, uh, if y'all will just do that, and then you can go listen to that message on Elohim. And it reveals to us the Holy Trinity. But now, it's very important to understand that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. Why? Because the second person of the Trinity would be in the very center of the Trinity. Would be in the very center of the Trinity. We know the Father devised the plan. Jesus came and fulfill the plan, and the Holy Spirit was there at every stage of the plan. And so Jesus is the second person of the Holy Trinity. And Jesus took on humanity to bring us in to the very center of the Trinitarian life of God, or to bring us into the center of the Holy Trinity. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but, but I'm thinking about somebody that's been adopted, okay? Somebody that's been adopted. And we have uh, two grandchildren, two grandsons uh, that are adopted. And you know what we've done as a family? We brought them in the very center of our family, in the very intimate part of our family. You understand what I'm talking about? Because they're dag now. They're dag. They're dag. I mean, they are dag, and we have brought them in the very center of, of the life of our family. Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me, for a God that didn't have to, for a God who is holy, for a God who is just, to come 
and, a, a, and, and place himself, the Holy Trinity is operation here, is in operation, in, in a virgin's womb for me, for you. And not only to do that, but to come and die and rise again to bring us into the life of God. Do we understand that this morning? Do we understand that that was the desire of God in the first place when he created man in the garden was to bring man into fellowship, man into the Holy Trinity and uh, a conversation and relationship that had always existed and will always exist, that he wanted us in there. Wow. Maybe that don't do for you what it does for me. But when I came up on that revelation years ago, that blesses me to know that my God loves me that much to bring me in the very center of his life. That's why the virgin birth. Jesus is God. Secondly, this morning, Jesus became flesh. And if you want to put in parentheses, parentheses there, uh, human. He became human. That's what flesh means. Jesus became human. Now, I want you to write this down. Jesus is the word who became human. Now, let's talk about that this morning. Now, we know our God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And there is no change ever going to be in any of the persons of the Trinity. Listen to me this morning. We change. There's never going to be any change in the Trinity. But Jesus took on humanity. That's the reason the virgin birth. That's the only way he could take on humanity was through the virgin birth. And I'm not talking about just a, a body, but literally the humanity of man. Do we understand today that he was not human before this, but he became human? And not just for 33 years to die. Listen to me now. He became human forever. There is a God man in heaven today. In the center of the Trinity. Representing everybody that's ever been born. Woo! And he's there. <clears throat> he's there this morning. He's there this morning saying, Father... Bless Hal as he preaches today. Amen. Bless people so they can hear today. Amen. Bless people so they can hear things they wouldn't know. Listen, we sang that song, Our God is Bigger and Better. You believe that? Then stop it. Stop worrying. We got a God man in heaven that sees everything that ever happens to you. He ain't missed nothing. Hey, Lord, did you miss it? To, I'm sick down here. Did you notice that? <laughs> he knew you was going to be sick before you got sick. Lord, you notice we, we kind of in a financial crunch here. He already knew it before you made that mistake. Or he already knew it before you got laid off and you didn't see it coming. Sometimes it's not on our part. Sometimes it's a situation. He saw your situation before your situation happened. Listen to me. He is there this morning. How do we know that? Well, let's go back to John chapter 1 and verse 11. He came to his own people. That's us, right? It wasn't just the Jews. He said, well, I thought he just came to the Jews. What are you going to do with a Samaritan woman? Come on now. I could give you some more, but I got to go on. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. You remember when you rejected him? I do. I remember a bunch of times I rejected him. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave them the right to become children of God. There you go. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. There's another impossibility with man. So the word became what? Human. Flesh. Whichever translation 
uh, you've got. The Word became human. God, in His plan to redeem us. Why the virgin birth? He became human. That's the only way redemption could happen, folks, is He had to become human. He didn't have to come, but when He chose to come, He had to become human. So the Word became flesh and made His home among us. You ever think about that? You ever been tired? I read in my Bible, Jesus said it to well because he was tired. That's crazy that God got tired. How about this one? Throughout the Old Testament, he was known as what? The God who never slumbers or sleeps. But in the New Testament, he's on the boat asleep. Come on now. The Bible says he was hungry when he was going. You ever been hungry? Hangry? Come on now. He got thirsty. He went to the bathroom. Are y'all all right? Now the Bible says the angels were given charge over him that the, he would not never dash his foot against a stone because the prophecy that with no bone of him would ever be broken. Well, I wish I had that angel. But anyway, I was just sighed nobody. Amen. How many of y'all been like, amen, I need that angel too. But look here now, I'm trying to tell you something. Human. Human. We understand that. We understand the love. And we understand that he does know what we go through. He experienced hurt. All the disciples left him in the ire when he needed them the most. You ever had somebody do that to you? Don't call her name out. Just pray for them. Amen. Come on now. Think about it, guys. He looked over the city and it broke his heart. Heart ever been broken? Betrayed. He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. You ever deal with temptation with just so heavy on you? You're like, oh, no, nope, I'll make this, Lord. And then that verse over in 1 Corinthians, no temptation has taken you. Y'all all need to memorize that verse. You know, how do you know that verse, brother? Because I get tempted all the time. And no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with a temptation make a way for you to escape. Come on, you need to memorize that. But you know what? He knows what you're going through. So nobody knows what I'm going through right now. So much junk in my life. So much hurt in my life. I may not know what you're going through. May nobody know what you're going through in this whole room. But there is one here this morning that is unseen. That I'm preaching about today. That knows exactly where you live. He's got your address. He's got your back. He's ahead of you. He's behind you. He's with you. He's watching over you. And I'm just not sure why you were today. Amen. Why the virgin birth? Because he became human. We got a representative today. We got somebody that knows what we're going through. I like to think about the humanity of Jesus when maybe Peter stumbled and fell down. They all laugh. It's all right to laugh, isn't it? As long as you make sure the per person isn't hurt. My family laughs at me when I'm hurt. I don't know. I, I mean, I was digging a, 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 a water line one time, and I hit a root, and that big digging machine knocked me slap down. And I got up and looked over there, and they was all laughing. I'm like, how y'all know I ain't hurt? <laughs> he was hurt. Every feeling, every emotion you've ever experienced, Jesus experienced. Lazarus, his friend, died. He cried. Even knowing he was going to raise him from the dead. You say, well, I don't understand that. I cried when my mama died. My daddy died. I've cried when many people in this church have died. But I knew they was going to come back. But I cried for my loss. It's human. See, 
It goes on and says, he became human, made his home among us. Home is a wonderful place. There's nowhere like home in it. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. Would y'all let that sink in? <clears throat> unfailing love means he's never going to quit loving you. Did anybody ever stop loving you? Jesus not. He has a pursuing love. For all them years that you pushed him away and you may be sitting here today thinking, I ain't ready to get saved yet. And you're steady pushing him away. And his love for you is as great as his love for your pastor up here that serves him and loves him. Just, just Lord, help us this morning to understand unfailing love and to experience it, please, Jesus. Especially in this season of Advent. So he became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have all seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Write this down. Jesus became human to become the perfect sacrifice for sin. I love my family. I love my wife. I've been my girlfriend for 45 years. But I can't die for her. I love y'all. There ain't no, there's not a person in this building I don't love. I mean that. But I can't die for your sins. Much as I love you, I can't get saved for you, and I can't die for you. And what I'm trying to paint the picture for you is this. We was all in a hopeless situation. And no matter how much we loved each other, we can't die for each other. We could die. You can give your life for somebody. I've heard stories of people giving their life to rescue somebody else, trying to save somebody from drowning. They drowned their self, step in front of somebody who's thinking to get shot and take the bullet. We have soldiers throughout the years in our military that have died that you and I could be free here, but that can't save any of us. But Jesus, he became human. Why the virgin birth? So he'd be the perfect sacrifice. Why? Again, going back to the first point, he is God. God is holy. God is without sin. We needed somebody without sin to get us out of sin. Have y'all got that this morning? We needed somebody out of sin. We needed somebody holy and just and righteous that sin had, had no way of tainting his life. We needed to be rescued. I'm about so blessed I can't preach. I'll be honest with y'all. I mean, y'all just don't know what this does for me to know that my Jesus loves me this morning. My Jesus loves you this morning. My Jesus came to this world and didn't have to. And he came to be a sacrifice for your sin. Listen to what Hebrews says in Hebrews 5 and, and 7. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, If you don't believe in the Trinity, who in the world is Jesus talking to? This is a Trinitarian passage. This is a conversation in the Holy Trinity. When Christ came into the world, he said to God, Oh, I'm... Mm. I love when the Lord, I love past the scriptures when we find the Holy Trinity talking to one another, especially when they're talking about who? Us. Amen. You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a what? Everybody say it together. Body. You have given me a body to offer. You say, well, why in the world did God institute all those sacrifices and offerings in the Old Testament? Why in the world did God have this offering for this and this offering? All that was a revelation. All that was a revelation of Jesus. It was not for salvation. Nobody has ever been saved outside the sacrifice of Jesus' sacrifice for sin. But all that was to point to Jesus. If you will, signpost. How do you get somewhere? Because you see the signpost. Turn here. Turn there. Sometimes we don't read the sign. We get lost. 
Today we got a GPS. We put the thing in and it takes us where we're going. I want you to understand all this was a signpost. If you were to read all of Hebrews chapter 11, it says the sacrifices and offerings were a shadow of the good things to come. You can't eat any apples off the shadow of a tree. Did y'all get that? But what can the shadow do? Lead you to the tree. You have given me a body. You were not pleased with burnt offerings and offerings for sin. Then I said, this is Jesus talking to the Father. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God. That is written to me in the scripture as we approach this time of Advent. As we approach the celebration of Christmas. I know you're putting your lights up and your tree up. And as you do that, think about the light of God. Think about the cross when you put your tree up. Bring and keep Christ in this celebration. I know you're trying to do the Black Friday. That's past, isn't it? Okay. Well, you're not trying to do that now, but anyway, I'm not a shopper. Uh, you're trying to do all this Christmas stuff. Keep Jesus in there. We're celebrating him coming into the world. Look, guys, he couldn't die if he hadn't have been born. The virgin birth is the foundation if you're not pleased with burnt offerings and offerings for sin, then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written about me in the Scripture. And we can look at a lot of Scripture about that. Write this down. Jesus became human to die for our sin. Jesus became human to die for our sin. How many of y'all remember the conversation Jesus had with the woman at the well, right? And they were talking about worship. And Jesus said, if you're going to worship, here's the deal. God is a spirit. Everybody say spirit. spirit. Can a spirit die? God is a spirit. So in the eternal nature of God, Father, Son, and Spirit, He is spirit. So here's our dilemma. We're lost in sin, and we have a death sentence on us because we're born in sin, and everybody in this room has sin. And here's our dilemma. We couldn't die. God couldn't die. We can't die for each other's sins and God couldn't die. You women. And so why in the virgin birth? Jesus came and took on humanity so he'd be the perfect sacrifice. And not only so he'd be the perfect sacrifice, so he could die. Listen to what the Hebrew writer said again in Hebrews chapter 2. It says this in verse 14. Because God's children are human beings. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're human. Now turn to the person next to you and say, all animals are not human. Now turn to the person next to you and say, human beings are not animals. I don't care what your science teacher told you. You say, how do you know that, Brother Hal? I believe the Bible. Listen, everything, everything, I, I don't have no proof in my pocket. I don't have any physical proof. What I do have is better than anything that can be seen. It's that I believe this is God's word. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. The Son also became human, flesh, and blood. For only as a human being could he die. Do you see that, folks? Why the virgin birth? He couldn't die for our sins. He couldn't be the perfect sacrifice. And only by dying could he break. Everybody say break. break. The power of the devil. Woo-wee. He ain't got nothing on me. He had something on me at one time. Jesus took the eraser and erased it all. Amen. He took the blood and washed it away. Amen. Come on now. I don't care who anybody calls you or what your reputation might have been or may have been. Jesus can change it all. 
Now, I got to get back to the scripture. Uh, who had, he says, let me read it all again. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. Stop saying you're going to be an angel when you get to heaven. I'm going to get me some wings. I don't get nothing. <laughs> Never in the Bible does it talk about, I don't want no wings. I want the glorified body. And it don't come with wings. All right? I'm, I'm not going to be an angel when I get to heaven. I never have been an angel, and I'm not ever going to be an angel. But anyway, <laughs> I just thought I'd get y'all going with that. Amen. Help me, Lord. All right, only in this way could he free all. You want to be free this morning? Come to Jesus, who lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Let me tell you something, folks. I'm going to lead this body, but I ain't going to die. When I close my eyes, I'm going to see Jesus. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Why the virgin birth? Because Jesus needed to die for our sins. Jesus had to take on humanity to bring us into the center of the Trinity. And not only that, why the virgin birth? Jesus overcame death. Jesus overcame death. How? Remember what the angel told Mary in Luke? You remember what the angel told Joseph in Matthew? What is conceived in the womb is conceived of the Holy Ghost. Write this down. Because of Jesus' eternal nature, death could not hold him. Amen. Death has held everybody that's ever died. Up until Jesus died and rose again. All the Old Testament saints, what does it say in Hebrews chapter 11? They all died in faith, not having received the promise. Why? Jesus hadn't come yet. But when Jesus came and died, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that he went to hell and that he got the keys. Amen. He got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Amen. I don't plan to be buried. They're going to do something with this body, but I don't know. I ain't going to be in it no longer so they can do what they want to do. And don't come by and say, Brother Al looks good. You say, Brother Al, gone. <laughs> because of Jesus' eternal nature. He's God. He's God, guys. He took on humanity. Listen to what Peter preached. I like to, I love Peter's message. You should read it sometimes after he was filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. He preached 3,000 people got saved. And it says in Acts 2, 22, people of Israel, listen. People of FIMC, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew uh, what would happen. And in his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. But God released him. Come on now. Look at verse 24. But God released. Listen. God released. Why is God? God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life. For death could not keep him in its grips. Woo! I, man, can y'all grant? I'm just old wham. I'm sorry. I'm just old. Sometimes I do get speechless. Amen. <laughs> Believe it or not. But hey, listen to me. Hell thought they had him. He died. They all looked at him. Come off the cross, they said. And prove you the son of God. He had he had other, other ways of proving he was the son of God. And they laid him in the tomb and a day passed. They laid him in the tomb and two days passed. They laid him in the tomb and the third day started coming up and hell thought they had him. The Pharisees thought they was done away with him. 
And all of a sudden, somebody said, I think I saw him move. <laughs> and he did move. He got up, folks. And the stone wasn't rolled away to let Jesus out. The stone was rolled away to let us in. He's alive today. You say, brother, how, how you know he's alive? Because I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I'm going to die believing the Bible. I'm going to die reading the Bible. I love God's word. Let's go on. Because of his eternal nature, death couldn't hold him. The Bible said God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life. For death could not keep him in its grips. But King David said, where did King David say it? He said it over in Psalms and and Peter used it in his message on the day of Pentecost. King David said this about Jesus. He said, I saw that the Lord is always with me and I will not be shaken. Great song, W. I ain't going to be shaken either. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praise. My body rests in hope. Why? David was in the Old Testament and Christ hadn't come and rose again. He says, my body rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. Folks, I'm bypassing the grave. Everybody that loves Jesus, N.T., New Testament, bypasses the grave. Old Testament, they did have to go in the grave and they went to a place, uh, that, that a comforting place, according to Jesus in Luke. <clears throat> I don't have time to deal with that this morning. Uh, but... After Jesus died and rose again, he got all those Old Testament saints and carried it with them, and they all rested in hope. Today, you and I rest in hope. I want you to write this down. Jesus is our hope of eternal life. Folks, let me be real serious with you. We're all approaching death. Some are closer than others. As I look around this sanctuary... I don't see people I used to see. All over this place. Sin and I came here, there's 16 people here. There's three here now. One by one, I buried them. I got a hope this morning. I got a hope. All those I buried that I knew, knew the Lord, I'm going to see them again. See, the fact is, I want you to get this. I want you to download this. Jesus is the hope of our eternal life. And I want, you to, I want to read 1 Corinthians 15, 19 to you. If our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. I want you to understand something this morning. I'm glad they ain't gone if they love Jesus. They aren't gone. They ain't gone either. <laughs> Come on, guys. Preached a lot of funerals. You know the ones that break my heart? The ones I've had to preach where I knew the person wasn't saved. Knew I'd never talk to them again. I'd never see them again. You say you can't judge people. No, I can't. But I buried some people I knew didn't know Jesus because I'd ask them before they died. But everyone I ever buried, Granny, Granny got to be right there close to Jesus. Waving. Daddy, I miss Daddy. I miss a lot of people. There's going to come a day There's going to come a day when I'm going to see him again. Matter of fact, there's coming a day when no tears will be in my eyes. It's coming a day I hope where the circle won't be broken and I'll look and see you who I pastored 
There ain't nobody that I don't want to make heaven. Even people that are my enemies. If our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has raised from the dead. He said, how do you know that? Because I believe the Bible. He is the first of a great harvest <clears throat> of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, Adam, now the resurrection of the dead has begun through another man. Jesus, or just as everyone dies, folk, we all going to die. He said, man, I come to be blessed this morning, Brother Hal. That's a downer. You get a little older, it becomes a praise. Amen. <clears throat> My grandma used to say, I'm tired. I'm about to get there. Amen. <laughs> Just as everyone dies, because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. There's an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first harvest. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised as the first harvest. And all are raised when, we, when he comes back. <clears throat> so folks, look. Do you understand we have a living hope? If we just had a hope in this life, it would be a hope that would die one day. But see, we all live with this hope. And, and there's a lot of people I want to see. But I don't want to leave you hanging on that. I listed a lot of people I want to see, but let me tell you who I want to see the most. One I want to see the most is the one that I've preached about for 36 years. That's the first thing. It's going to be some people behind me. There ain't going to be nobody in front of them. Amen. And when I die, I don't know where that's going to be, how it's going to be, when it's going to be. I just know it's going to be. And when I die and close my eyes, I'm going to see him. John saw him in the book of Revelation. He saw Jesus in his glorified body. And that's my hope. I have hope in him in this life. He's changed my life. I trust him to do small things, big things. Now I want you to write this down as we close out. Why do I believe in the virgin birth or why the virgin birth? Because Jesus overcome death. Everyone will die. Everybody say die. die. <laughs> but if you belong to Christ, you will be raised. Everybody say raised. raised. From the dead to eternal life. Death takes people away from us. Death will separate us all. But there'll be a glad reunion day when we all get to heaven, those who have trusted Jesus. Now, my question to you today, as straight up as I can ask you, is do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Do you have the hope of Jesus Christ in your life? Because to me, it's not just about streets of gold and, and, a, and a mansion in heaven. It's about being with the one I love forever. Do you have that hope today? If not, today is the day. Let's stand.